beloved sibling, siblings in Christ. God's peace be with you. Uh, this is the fifth Sunday in Lent, and uh, about our second week in uh, shelter in place, but it's good to be with you at least in this online or virtual level. Our lesson for the fifth Sunday of Lent, our gospel, is from John, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 45. A familiar story of the raising of Lazarus. Now, it's kind of a strange story, if you will, for this fifth Sunday in Lent, because we know where this is going. We know the direction it's headed towards Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, toward crucifixion, toward death. And yet, the appointed gospel is a story, a narrative of resuscitation, of life coming out of death. We start with the understanding that Martha and Mary and Lazarus are good friends of Jesus. It says in, in John's Gospel that Jesus loved them. In Luke's Gospel, Mary and Martha show up. Familiar story about Martha being so active and trying to serve and Mary sitting, kneeling at Jesus' feet. And here in John's Gospel, they show up as good friends beloved of Jesus. So let's start from the beginning. Jesus is with his disciples and he's doing ministry, he's preaching, he's healing. And word comes to him that Lazarus is ill. Please come quickly. So what does he do? He says, oh, this won't lead to death. This illness will not lead to death. Let's just wait two days because it's a, a chance to glorify God. Now, I doubt if Lazarus, in his dying, appreciated being a sermon illustration for Jesus, but that seems to be the way it works. So two days go by, and Jesus says, well, let's head up to Bethany. Lazarus is asleep. Now in John's Gospel, it's quite, quite common for the disciples to not really understand what Jesus is saying. He tends to be a little bit obscure. And it's, they say to him, well, if he's recovering and just sleeping peacefully after he recovered, why are we going? And Jesus says, Lazarus is dead. And then his disciples remind him, well, wait a minute, Jesus. If we go to Bethany, close to Jerusalem, you know what happened when you were there last. They said they were going to stone you. They were going to kill you. Lazarus might not be the only corpse that we deal with. But Jesus says, you know, if you walk in the light, you're not concerned with darkness, and they head on out. Thomas saying, we will go and we will die with you. So they arrive outside the village, and here the mourners, and Martha comes and addresses Jesus and scolds him. If you had only been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. But I know you're in good with God, so maybe if you ask God, you know, God will do whatever you want. And Jesus replies, Lazarus will be raised. And Martha doesn't seem too impressed. Yeah, yeah, I know, at the end of time. See, apparently Martha and Mary and Lazarus were up on their theological doctrines. This was a new thing for the Jews up to this time. And it used to be that they thought, you 
would just die. And you'd go to Sheol. It wasn't hell, but it wasn't heaven, just kind of a holding place. But now they adapted through the leadership of the Pharisees this new theological doctrine that when you die, you die, but then the last day on Judgment Day, you were raised. So Martha is saying to Jesus, yes, I know, I've said the creed every day since I started Sunday school, every Sunday. But I want my brother now. Imagine this. Your best friend's husband dies. You go to greet her, and you say to her, why are you upset? You know, in the creed it says, on the last day we will rise, and maybe that's some comfort to your friend. But what she really wants is for her husband to be back. So what Jesus proposes to Martha is far more radical. He says, no, you don't understand. I'm not talking just about the last days. I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone who believes in me shall never die, but have eternal life. Do you believe that, Martha? She says, yes, I believe you are the Messiah. So she goes and gets her sister Mary, and Mary comes out and kneels at Jesus' feet and worships and says, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. And both she and Jesus weep. Jesus is not immune sorrow. And those around say, see how much he loved them? See how much Jesus loved Lazarus. He's agitated. But he doesn't just say, well, that's the way it is. He doesn't blame. <clears throat> he goes straight to the cemetery and instructs them to roll away the stone. And ever practical Martha says to him, quoting the King James Version, don't you know, he's been dead four days, he stinketh. But amid the crowd, amid the folderol, Jesus cries out in a voice loud enough to raise the dead, Lazarus, come out! was bound in the embalming cloths and hobbles and limps out. Well, in John's Gospel, the narrative takes a downward turn from there. Because this is when the religious leaders say, we can't put up with this anymore. This is it. This guy has to die. In the Synoptic Gospels, it's when he cleanses the temple, when he turns over the money changers' tables. But in John's Gospel, this is the last straw. Bringing life in the face of and this, the keepers of the status quo will have nothing to do with it. You see, when Jesus shows up, the dead get raised. So as we continue our journey towards Easter and towards Good Friday, 
ponder this. What does eternal life mean to us? Not just something in the future, but right now. That God's action in our world says death is not the last answer. The sarcophagi that we find ourselves in, whether it be categorized by being race or gender or status or education, are not the last word. And even now, miracles can happen. What we consider miracles, sometimes even illness is not the last word. Certainly not coronavirus. As we approach Easter, we believe in a God who is the resurrection and the life, not just in the future, but now. A colleague tells of a woman in her congregation who's had a very rough life. Married early, both of them were alcoholics, divorced, the children were taken away for a time, had to declare bankruptcy because of difficult decisions. A long 40-year struggle with alcoholism, and it wasn't easy. But the ministry of AA over time made the difference. Her children are back. They're not whole, but back. She lives never far from an AA meeting. That's key for her survival. But she's a person of joy. She says, God has given me, blessed me with the gift of not being bitter, of being hopeful, of sustaining me, though I was death itself. So every Sunday being at Easter, but particularly on Easter Sunday, she sings with such resonant joy, Jesus Christ has risen today. just in the future, but now, in our lives, in our condition, in our struggles.